Hello guys, and welcome back to the Zane Investing. I believe it's safe to say that AMC stock is soaring today. The fact that Ray Dalio's hedge fund nearly tripled its investments on GameStop and AMC may have contributed to this. You might also mention 0.72 Capital's purchase of 606,000 GameStop shares worth $11 million. Bear in mind that in January of 2021, they were one of the hedge funds that lost the most money due to shorting GME, losing almost 15%. Several 13F filings indicating a strong position in AMC and GameStop have begun to surface. Many of these meme stocks, or the stocks that people are predicting will decline, are currently in decline. When billionaires worth hundreds of billions of dollars buy these enterprises, this is obviously not the case. Thus, let's dive into all this knowledge. What is occurring today? Give you guys a complete breakdown of the Vortex data. You technical types, things are looking well. You have once again surpassed your five-day moving average. So let's immediately begin. You already know the rules. Provide your comments, questions, or concerns in the space below. So, to begin with, I'll briefly summarize what is occurring with regard to point 72. They purchased 606,000 GameStop shares for $11 million. They lost 15% in January by shorting GME earlier. I would say that is a pretty bullish wager, right? Usually, it's a good sign when a person who was really unfavorable about a firm begins to buy its stock. Ray Dalio's fund, Bridgewater Capital, virtually tripled its stake in GameStop to over 39,000 shares, but the holdings barely doubled in value to 712,000 due to a 28% decline in the stock of the video game retailer during the period it says meme. In the meantime, Miller's fund sold its interest in Bed, Bath & and Beyond. It possessed 136,000 shares valued at $677,000. Adjusted for its stock split in July of last year, GameStop shares soared from under $5 to over $80 in January of 2021 as retail investors flocked to the company's aid and squeezed the hedge fund shorting the firm. Over the first six months of 2021, AM shares rose from roughly $2 to over $59 per share. Okay, here we stand. Also, the hedge fund roughly tripled the size of its AMC investment to approximately 64,000 shares while increasing the wager's value by 74% to 261,000. It's not a tremendous amount, but it's a significant increase from where it was before. This is an important reason why people get thrilled. Remember that these are the only two firms with 13F filings. You will begin to receive hundreds of 13F filings, and there will be an entirely new round of hedge fund positioning. And it appears that there are several bullish hedge fund positions in AMC, GameStop, and Bed Bath and beyond. There could be reasons for that. They may be only precautions in the grand scheme. They may be shorting these stocks significantly more than they are longing them. It's not something that you generally see, at least in the recent past. Therefore, it's driving AMC to respond bullishly by approximately 12%. Correct? People are actively purchasing these stocks or tripling their stakes, regardless of the starting amount of their positions. Thus, it has been a positive thing thus far. Examining the Ortecas data reveals that you remain on the threshold securities list for AMC stock. And we'll talk briefly about the STD that are expected to be returned today. It appears that they are being repurchased today. For the past two days, I've received numerous inquiries such as, are the STD even being bought back? It's difficult to say. With today's 12% gain, however, it appears that at least some of these are being repurchased. Remember that this is not shorts coverage. These are TD tax. Those are the real shares that must be repurchased, excluding the 2,333% short interest of free float. Thus, the situation appears to be quite favorable. And I believe that by itself, AMC is simply waiting on a powder keg for any good news which may produce these 12% rises. And this is hardly a major development, right? Yes, hedge funds are growing their holdings. In the broad scheme of things, though, it is not that significant for AMC. AMC has a significantly larger catalyst on the horizon in the near future, with current cost to borrow averages of 501.5%, maximums of 755.5%, and minimums of 1%. You are still not receiving updates from interactive brokers regarding the limited availability. I find that quite peculiar. 
I have no idea why we are not receiving any updates. Still, it is very obvious what is occurring, correct? The cost of our services is increasing again. Currently, there are 62 orders totaling $19.03 million, representing a 5% increase in order value. Not really bullish on options, not particularly bullish on options. Obviously, these are not the only possibilities that will be included in AMC. These are the uncommon alternatives. They may be uncommon due to how far they are from the money, right? A $10 phone call on March 17 is quite uncommon. It is only $15,000, however. Thus, there are various reasons why these are marked. They are not all of the options, but only the unique ones. They are not bullish on the day and are not optimistic overall. Now, let's briefly examine some of the revenues. Before we delve into more particular information on AMC, I do want to cover this. But, we will have Shopify, Roku, Energy Transfer. Cisco, Marathon Oil, Twilio, SunPower, and a few more smaller companies here after hours. Pre-market on Thursday for Datadog, Crocs, Paramount, Hasbro, and Shake Shack. Draft Kings, Applied Materials, Vail, and Redfin are open late on Thursday, along with Draft Kings. The following day, John Deere AMC Networks. Please note that this is not AMC Entertainment. AMP Networks is unique. The indexes may be slightly affected by what is said and how it is said depending on the earnings. Reports of Roku, Shopify, Twilio, and Cisco released after market hours. They do provide reports, so there is that, and I did want to ensure that everything was covered. Now, if we go to retail sales and the data that was released today on that, if we click on today, you will see that retail sales came in at 3, 3, 3%. The anticipated 12 to 1.2%. Retail sales increased by 3% month over month. That is absurd. That is enormous. 3%. What is 12 multiplied by? What is that? An annualized rate of 36%. Run away from here. So I am genuinely surprised that the markets are not viewing this as a negative development, given that the Fed will be able to raise rates substantially more and for an extended period of time. Hence, I do not sure when the markets will realize or pay attention to this. This is, in my opinion, one of the greatest negative risks at the moment. You were engulfed by this on February 8. Now you were back on top of that. I would classify that as a favorable aspect. Now you must determine if the price will approach and break above 530, and then if it will be able to break above this downward moving line of resistance. Certainly, it appears that way. This might be the beginning of a lot more optimism, especially as more 13F filings are out and as more people become optimistic on AMC ahead of AMC earnings men. In my opinion, this concludes the content of this video. Click the like button and subscribe to the Source channel for comments, questions, or concerns in the box below. Enjoy the remainder of your day, and I will see you in the following one.